So hi guys, um, this is the OpenCV workshop and we'll be covering the basics on computer vision and Python. And don't worry if it sounds very really, like, complex because the actual implementation is actually not. Like. So I'm your first presenter to the talk and we also have Kenneth, something and Emily presenting for the subsequent sections. Oh my god, why did this talk? Okay, yes. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to install the libraries up. And you may ask what's the library, but, and, okay, you may ask what's a library. For those of you who don't know, uh, a library is basically a collection of code which other people have written for you. And if you have been for any other, any of the other workshops, like the JavaScript one, or the, actually, yes, or the, the JavaScript or the Flask one, you will probably have encountered similar things before. Can you just, Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yes, libraries in Python. Uh, it's a very useful tool for you to use. Uh. So, how do we go about installing the packages needed for OpenCV? We can go to your terminal, which you... Okay, and I'll be going through this for Mac or Apple. Mac or Linux users first. So, to open a terminal, you just press Ctrl Alternate T to open a terminal. And some of the commands are ls, which shows whatever files or directories you have inside your current, inside your current location. cd, which means to navigate. cd documents, which means to navigate to a certain directory. And cd dot dot, which means to navigate out of the current directory. I'm currently on a Windows machine, so I won't exactly be able to demonstrate this, at least for the LOS one. But for Windows users, you we'll have something similar. Instead of Control Alternate T, you press Windows R and type CMD, which I will demonstrate now. It's quite simple. This not it's not very complex. So you see this black black box that appears, and this is called the, what we call terminal. And some of the commands here is dir, which means the current, which shows the current directory, similar to the ls for Linux or Mac. And the other commands are actually the same. We have cd, cd documents, and cd dot dot, which means to reverse. I mean, not reverse, to go out of the current directory. Okay, so now on to the actual installation of OpenCV. Um, you can, you must check your Python version. Oh, okay. wait. This is assuming that you really have Python installed on your laptop. So as you can see, I have Python 3.8.1. Um, and my version, well, I just showed it to you all, but you can actually also do this and it will just output 3.1. And so for the first step, you will need to make sure you have Python 3. This is very important, okay, because a lot of the dependencies needed for, at least for the course that we prepared, uh, depend on the fact that you have Python 3 installed. So after this, we just go pip install OpenCV. I already have OpenCV installed, so they'll just show me that the requirements are already satisfied. Sorry, OpenCV pattern. Yes. Yeah, so you can see I really have, have it installed, but yours should be installed right now. Analyzing the pixel data of the images, we have two different sources. One is a static image, so we just plot a histogram of a static image. Another one is live or dynamic, means a video or a webcam feed. So we are starting with the static histogram first. To accept an image file using OpenCV, to use this line, cv2.imv. So now let's go to the histogram worksheet.py. So we need to import the CV2 library. So all you can do is just import CV2. Next, we need to specify the image in this file. Set 
here, uh, image location is inside the IM read. If you see, it is on here. Why we variable and we want to put the file name here is to easier because we have also another one in the file. So we don't have to copy and paste single time we want to change the file. So the file name, look at here, this file is inside the same folder as histogram worksheet not py. So we can directly copy the more of it. If your image is located somewhere else, you need to copy the full location of it as well as the, the name of the file to here. So since our image is the same folder as our histogram worksheet.py, let's put it here, the name of the file here. So now, our static histogram have two different modes we can we can do and draw the histogram of two different modes. One is color mode and the other one is monochrome. So specify color equals to RGB and the number of bins. So this color is color we want, RGB or monochrome. So we can change this value RGB to something else to display a different image to a different histogram. So here we do if color equals equals RGB. Check whether our uh, specifying the RGB color so we can draw the colored histogram. As we read the file as shown here. We are, we are going to read the file and process the image, store it as the variable called IMG. So we are going to look through color using enumerate. Enumerate it does is it returns two values. The increment one is the iterator. So example that color equals RGB. And if I copy this. And I print I have this color. You tell me zero and R, one and G, two and B. The first, the I is zero, one, two, three, and so on. Or the color, the second parameter returns is whatever it iterates through. So in this case, this. RGB, so it becomes RGMB. So I'm going to calculate the histogram using OpenCV uh, so histogram uh, yeah, what's this grace code? Okay. okay. We're going to calculate the histogram using the uh, open CV. What you put inside calculate his from CV2 is these are the parameters. So basically images is the array of the uh, image you have read. While channels is each channel, like each color channel. So in this case, we are it in a for loop. So we loop every single color. So we are specifying the zero channel inside image, which is blue in this case. 
of all, the mask, it is the optional element which we are not using, so we just use none. This size, we are referring it to spins. So this his size is the array of histogram sizes in each dimension. So like histogram is a range of values. So we want to specify how many of these lines we want, how many of these bars we want. So this is the bins. The ranges is from 0 to 256, which is one whole color channel. So and after that, we plot the graph on PLT. PLT is a matplotlib, the pi, pi plot from matplotlib. So we're going to use this plot function from it. So we put in this histogram, a calculated histogram inside this, and we specify the color equals col. So if you recall from here, this col, it will iterate through B, G, and R. So in matplotlib, you can specify the color, and they allow B, G, and R to be shorthand for blue, green, and red. So you can just pass in the color, the string B, G, or R. So it specifies what color. This alpha is the transparency, which when you have a histogram with many different many of the same values, the histogram may overlap and you cannot see the different colors you the histograms of different colors you have drawn. So we can change it to a lighter value of like 0 0.7. So you can see what is overlapping. Next we just title the plot histogram EGR. So it's a color histogram. And up till now, we only plot the histogram and specify the title, and we have not displayed the histogram first. We have not displayed the histogram yet. So we are going to uh, plot, to make the plot for the monochrome in histogram for the monochrome image. So now, as with the plot, I'm going to read the file. However, I'm going to make it into a monochrome. I'm going to convert it into monochrome. So the OpenCV mread function has a parameter to allow you to specify that you want to convert it to monochrome. But so you converted it to monochrome, uh, the data is still in multi dimensions. We want to make it using this function. So it's from NumPy. It's not. Never mind, it's not, not from NumPy. So this what this function does is. is is that it converts a multi-dimensional into a single di dimensional array. So what we have to do is image equals to img dot raval. So we are going to convert this ar array of data into one dimension and storing it back as img. So now we can plot the graph. It's the same plotting a histogram here, except we don't have to put a for loop because we're only dealing with one color. And for this uh, channel, there's only one channel because it's monochrome. So the rest of it is the same. And we plot the histogram and we title it. So now we 
label the x axis by using x label. Running this function and then passing in this string bin, we label the x axis as bin, and we can uh, also label the y axis as frequency by passing the frequency string inside y label. So not only we can show the the port that we have ported by using plt dot show. So I'm gonna save it and then. I'm going to run file. If you are using IO DDRE, you can just press F5. And if you are using something else like Notepad plus plus, you will go to a command prompt or terminal and and you can uh Go cd to your directory, it's change directory. So I'm going to change my directory to this. Well, if you have a space inside your directory, you should put a code so it can, yes. So if you want to run a Python file, you will need to do Python. If you have a uh, two, Two versions, the Python two and Python three. You need to specify Python three, then space file. So in this case, it's histogram worksheet dot py. Okay. So we enter, and here is the histogram. Okay. So to look at the image and look at the histogram and find that you can see how this image is being represented as a histogram. This loop seems interesting, but it may not be the most fun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do Live histogram. Yes. So open up histogram worksheet live py. So as with the static histogram, you can do you can import CV2 which is the OpenCV library, and we import iPlot or Matplotlib as PLT. Oops. Okay. Specify what, what is the file we are going to do. So for for accepting a video feed, we are going to need to use this video capture function. So in, in the slides, you will see this. You can accept a video file or, cam or webcam video feed. So you can specify if it's zero or one if you have multiple webcams. If you only have one, then you can put zero. Because I don't have as to a working webcam. I'm going to use this video. I can copy its name. And again, if you if the file is inside the same folder, you can just directly copy the name. Okay. So we're going to do the same EGR and monochrome thing. So we specify the color as BGR first, then the number of bins to be 256, which is the range of values of one color. So after this, we want to do a while true loop. 
Why you want to do this while through? Yeah, you. Are you? It's because uh, if you run it once, then it will only use, it will process my frame from the video. So you only run this whole code once, you only see that one frame. You, and you may not even see because the program will end after displaying that one frame, so it's very fast. So you want to do a while through loop so we, it so it can process every frame of the video on the webcam and and we, we can display it. So another thing about video capture the live histogram is that that's we need to process the image from the file. So you need to do capture not we from the file or the webcam. Yeah. So uh, this read success is I think it's whether the OpenCV can read the on the video capture. This image is the image that it captured. So the processed image. So we want to check whether the color is VGL. So you know if color equals equals VGL. And just like the static histogram, we also do this numerate and we for every color we calculate the histogram of it and we plot it. So and then we yeah, we title it and for the monochrome we do the same thing also. Uh so we do this mg dot revel so we convert it into a one dimensional array which uh okay. yes. so as you can see from the slides we need to put it in our true loop so after that, we calculate the histogram of the, this monochrome image, uh, the one that we read and plot it. So these steps are like the same as the static image. So that, uh, because every time you draw, every time you plot a histogram, uh, you plot anything on plot lit. It doesn't refresh the plots. So you can do this function from my plot lit, plt called pause. So you do plt dot pause. So it will pause the graph and then allows it to refresh the graph to show your new new uh next frame you will history for the next frame. So that's the same we do next label and y label. Label the axis. So when we come to this db 2 im show. This im show looks familiar. Uh, because on the starting one we do uh, I am read. So this is a OpenCV function where we can the image inside and uh, we name the window as video. So we can show display the view the place. In this case is very single frame because in a while true loop. So the one frame being processed and drop the histogram of it is being drawn play that frame. So okay when you pause you when you pause you need to specify how long so we can let's say 0 0.01 because we don't want to pause it for 
too long, if not, the graph becomes not refreshed. Uh, every it will be become a choppy. So to refer, you pause it. You need to actually go and clear the figure so that you can draw the the plots again. So there's this function called CLF on Matplotlib, which clears the figure. And another thing different from the static one, static histogram is that we need to add this. This is a put that allows us to specify to break the loop, break this while, while true loop. And when we press the Q key, we need this because maybe we are using webcam or the video is like 10 hours long. So if you want to exit the exit the the video, you need to press Q. Because if you normally when you try to queue a Python Python program for running, you press control C. Control C will only queue the either the or the show shown frame. Then it will open up again. So you need this to actually break break the loop. And then after you break the loop, we better release the camera and destroy the windows so that we return the resources back to the machine. So now we can try this program out. So we run the static histogram, but now it's we specify it as histogram worksheet like. So oops. So now see the Instagram being plotted in the video itself. Now you notice that this value keeps changing. And this histograms look very low, low line. This is like an outlier that you don't need to know at this very high massive value. So what how do you make it such that it isn't that that high of a value and then the, the rest is like so the bottom and this number doesn't always change. So now we can press U to actually stop this drawing and the playing of the video. Okay. Um oops. Okay. You press Q and it doesn't work, you have to click on the one CV window and then spam Q. So we go back up to here. This or hash hashtag signs I have commented out. So what this what this does is that uh, this PRT.gca that Y limit see is get current axis and then it do a set Y limit. So we are from the plot lib, we are gonna get the current axis that we are we are drawing the plot on. And we put a limit to the the y axis so it doesn't go beyond a certain limit so we set like this we should see that the we set the y limit at a certain value we should see that the value does not cross does not cross a certain value and then fluctuate so much so it, you have to pass in a iterable or a list in this case this is from zero to num x, and so it's quite exponentially. So zero to num x means 
uh, from zero to this, this number on the top. So we want to specify this, what is this number is we get the number of pixels of the video and we right, okay, we can get the length and the height of the video shape how many pixels white and the width and the breadth you just do img dot shape next zero and img dot shape index one so we multiply it together get the, the whole in whole number of pixels in each frame so after that we divide it by the case uh, it's just an arbitrary value to um, it's an arbitrary value, so uh, we, we have to draw an error to see which is the best. You put this as, uh, if you divide the number of pixels by too much, you may cut off your histogram. If it's too little, or you don't even divide it by 30, you can you may see that uh, there will be those very high outliers and then the rest of the histogram will be very low lying and you may not even see like a pattern or a... so in this case we just try dividing it by 30 and we run it again So now you can see that it's at 7,000 something because Matplotlet doesn't show the upper bound. You can see that the values in between is actually here. This really high outliers, we don't, it doesn't really matter, so we just put it here and it doesn't show. So maybe you, you see that it's still quite low lying. You may want to actually uh, divide by, by even more. So maybe 40. So this this is the game actually spike up because the uh, upper bound is now now reduced. But of course, you can also get full screen, so it's looks better. You can see larger x axis, so see the the pattern better. So in this case, it's up to you to actually go and try out and see which values is the best for you. Okay. Okay, yeah, so when you, when you see this, you may be thinking, how this color is EGR? It shouldn't colors be like RGB? But as it turns out, uh, when you use the I am read function, or when you read something, the OpenCV would read in EGR color format. The reason is that in the beginning when OpenCV was being made, EGR was uh, very popular among camera manufacturers and software pro providers. So it's BGR instead of RGB. But there's also another color format that is a bit more useful in computer vision. And I will pass the time over to Chisau to tell you more about it. Okay, can you all go and open up the worksheet called um, GUI underscore CV2 underscore worksheet? If you all, it should be, it won't force you to download already. 
for track bus, right? We are we we using CV two and NumPy, but we won't be using Matplotlib because it doesn't require it, uh. But you you can later after this you can mix and match whatever stuff you want and experiment with OpenCV because in this part we'll be learning about how to isolate the different colors and create a mask to say only show objects that are of green or blue. And so the first step, if we go open the worksheet, is to create the different track bars. Okay. It's to create different track bars. So we need to create, we use a cv2 under dot named window function to create a window with the label track bar. And before that, we need to set a, we need to set frame to np.0, 312, 503. So what does this, 312, 503 mean. This is actually the dimensions of the, the frame we want to create because if you think about it, an image has a width and a height, which is in this case, the height is 312, the width is 500. And for colored images, they have three channels. So R, G, and B, right? So that's why we create a three-dimensional object uh, with uh, one dimension, 312, one, one dimension, 500 and the other, the last dimension, uh, length three, and we put this shape or these three dimensions inside the np dot zeros function, which generates an a multi dimensional array based on the inputs here of zeros. Uh. And for each zero, we set the size to numpy underscore u in eight, which basically means an unsigned integer um that that has a size of eight bits. Yeah, this frame is needed because we want to set our window size to and calibrate it initially such that so that this so that the other windows won't be um, framed, won't be squashed or won't be oversized. Uh. Yeah, so it's, it's to set the boundaries of the other windows later on. And in the worksheet, so we know that this is NP zeros, uh, 312, 312. 503 and 3 and we set you set the size of each bit so each number to 8 bits okay and then we create a window with the label of track bar so now we have our window containing different track bars right we have to add the track bars to the window and cv2 actually has this function called create track bar which takes in um five parameters so the different parameters it takes in are uh, firstly the track bar label because you want to be able to reference the track bar later on when you get the value. The window label, which is in this case track bar because we previously created a window called track bar just now. The current value, the, which is the value you, when you, which is the initial value of the slider when it's first loaded. The maximum value and the callback function. Okay. What the callback function does is the f it's a user defined function that um it's a user defined function uh, which is called every time the slider input is changed. So let's say the track bar I input from like five to ten. Then what ha what will happen then is the fun the program will call the function that you define here. But since we're not using that for today, because we want we want the mask to update every frame of the video, we will just pass nothing to it. And we can do that by defining a function called nothing and set it to take in one variable and pass it. Okay, and back to here. Why are we creating six different track bars? Um I'll be covering more on what hue, saturation, and value mean data, but for now, you can just take... Um, for now, you, have, you just have to know that these are three different um, values that determine what a color is, and we are creating two track bars for each value to set the lower and upper limit for the different values. After this, we just need to create the different track bars. A this sorry sorry c two dot create track bar low height 
and so okay. okay so we need to create six different track bars each of a level low and high so low h would stand for low hue and high h would stand for the higher hue and for hue we need to set the maximum value to 179 because open cv is special for some reason and the values of hue range from 0 to 179 instead of 0 to 359 yeah and then we set the maximum to 179 and just pass the nothing function into each of them because we are going to be manually getting the functions we are going to be manually getting the values of track bar later on similarly for hue, for saturation and value, we just set low S to this and high S here, low V and high V. Uh, this one is also supposed to be 255 or so because oh. I bet. everything is 255. Uh, because for, for CV2, actually for a lot of things, um, the values of saturation and value range from 0 to 255. Uh. The reason why 255 is chosen is because it can fit into 8 bits. So now we have our different track bars. How do we exactly go about capturing them? Well, firstly we need an image to cap. Firstly we need an image to capture the track bars. Uh. So as as something previously said, we can use the cv 2 video capture function to um capture images from the camera. And we and we can put everything in a while loop so that we can read it, read the frame from the camera. And after that, because cameras or front-facing webcams, they will flip the image, right? So we have to flip it back in order for the image to look right to us. Uh, because um, let's say the, the, ca the camera is facing you and you move left, but in the photo or in the video, it will seem like you're moving right. So you will have to flip the image using the cv2.flip function which flips the frame and flips it along the axis, which is, in this case, 1. And after that, you can just display the image, like what something did earlier also, cv2.imshow, sets the label of the window to real and passes in the frame which we captured earlier. Okay, so now on to the actual track bar manipulation. We need to get the values of each of the low and high um, limits. So we can use can do that by using the cv2 dot get track bar position. Cv2 dot get track bar. Yes, get track bar position. Which and assign these three values to H S and V. So we want to get the lower bound first because we want to generate an array to represent the lower bound of the color calibration we are using. So we need to get the trackbar position from the trackbar which has labeled low H and from the window called trackbar. So once we have this, the three lower bound values for H, S, and V, we can pass them into an array and use the np.array function to convert it into a NumPy array. Um, this is needed because later on when we create the mask, we will need to use the NumPy array to set the lower and upper bounds. And similarly, we can do the same thing for the high, for the upper limit of the track bars. So we can use the get track bar position again and set this to an MP array dot high. Set, I mean, sorry, set this to the variable high. And okay, now I'll be going on to cover what HSV and HSL mean. I previously said that they are another way to visualize colors, right? Like RGB. But what is different about them is the fact that they are more fundamental in a sense because hue, SX, the hue value or h actually controls the 
color of the the controls the color itself. So the, the hue, the color of hue, can actually range from zero to three sixty. But in this case, it's zero to one seven nine because OpenCV is special, and the value of the value of hue determines what tint the color will be. So it it can be red, violet, blue, or green. So yeah, and for saturation, saturation basically determines how intense the color is. So a value, a saturation value of zero will be white, or basically black and white. Whereas a saturation value of 360, sorry, not 360, 255, because um, 255 can fit into 8 bits. Huh? So a saturation value of 255 will be the maximum, and the color will be the most intense. And finally, value is ranges from 0 to 255 also. And a value of 0 would, would mean that there's no light, because HSV, HSL, the L stands for light, so yeah, these, these two are exactly the same, it's just different names. And a value of 0 will mean there's no light, so it'll be black. But a value of 255 would mean that there's the most light, or the light's at the maximum, so it will be the brightest. Um, you all can go to see this, this website. There are actually many websites like this, but this is just one of them to show you what HSV stands for and how they compare with RGB. So you can see that if I move it from left to right, the hue changes, but the, but the saturation value don't change. If I move up, up and down, the, only the saturation changes. And if I do this other slider, which is the value, you can see that the entire image becomes darker and brighter. Okay, so we actually have done most of the conversion really because we are going to be using HSV in our bar and there's very little stuff left to do. So um, we just need to convert the frame or rather the image we've captured from BGR to HSV because OpenCV, as you all know, captures or reads images in the BGR format. And you can use the cv2.convertColor function. And this function takes in two variables, the image you want to convert and a preset, uh, a preset set of values, which is, in this case, part of the cv2 library. Yeah. And we just say cv2 dot color underscore vgr to hsv and it will magically do the conversion for us uh, because uh, their algorithms are very efficient okay um after that after we have converted frame we need to create a mask using the cv2 dot in range function which takes in three variables the frame and the frame you want to output or the, the frame you want to like uh, process and um, wait, wait a second, no, it's not this. Sorry, it takes in three, three variables the image you want to check, and the two lower and upper limits that we have defined earlier. So, in this case, it will be low and high, which are the numpy arrays that we have defined previously. And after that, we get this output object, we get this output, which is an object called mask. And what does this mask actually mean? Well, after the, after we create a mask, we have to apply it, right? And we can use the cv2.bitwise oops, bitwise n and set it and this function takes in three variables, um frame, frame and set the mask equals to mask up, which we have defined earlier here. And if you know what bitwise operators are, you can actually guess what this function does, cv2 dot bitwise underscore n. It's actually a C, a open cv function that's used to combine two images, or rather find the intersect between two images. So what I mean by this is this <laughs> uh, so what I, mean, what I mean by this is the n operation and for those who don't know what bitwise n means, it's one of the 
logical operators are. So, um, there's all, there's and, there's saw, and there's not, right? Mm. So what n does is it combines, it takes in two, two Boolean values, one and zero, or true and false, and it outputs zero if one of the values are zero, and it outputs one if both of the values are one. So as you can see in this table on the left-hand side, it's actually uh, it's a summary of what bitwise n does. And this actually can be applied to integers or to numbers that are more than one and zero, because in computer memory, um, numbers, or actually even strings rather, they are stored in binary data, which means that they can be computed or they can be combined using logical operators. So the, the binary form of the decimal 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1, and the binary form of 10 is 1, 0, 1, 0. And when you end when you use the um, logical end operator on them, you can see that the leftmost bit is 0 and 1, which gives 0. And similarly, the left, second leftmost bit gives is 1 and 0, which gives 0 um, according to this table here. The third leftmost bit is 1 and 1, so that's why we get this 1 over here. And the rightmost bit is 1 and 0, which gives um, 0 over here. So after the two numbers are converted using the bitwise n um, operator, we get this output, and if we convert it, convert it back into decimal, we get the output 2. Yeah. So the, these are the four different functions I mentioned Yeah, n, or, not, and xor. And actually, what CV2 is, is doing this with an image. So as you can see over here, I have a 5x5 five five matrix, which is a much smaller form or much smaller version of image. Now. And what the CV2, sorry, what the CV2 dot in range function is doing is it takes in the image low and high, right? So the low and high are actually the values we have defined earlier. And so let's say I want to check all images or all objects in the picture with the color blue. So for my in my case, the color blue is between 90 and 110 hue, right? And you can see that this demonstration actually shows that oh, the entire image, only those values between 90 and 110 are picked. And from there a mask is generated of basically ones and zeros, and then the two are merged, resulting in this final image. Okay, um, does anyone have any uh, clarifications with what this diagram or this GIF means? Oh, everyone do I? So good. Okay. So, after that, because we use the bitwise end function to find the intersection of the frame and the mask, we get this output called res, and we, you must remember, because this was converted using the HS, in the HSV format, right? We need to convert it back into BGR before we can display it on our screen. So we can use a similar function, cv2.convertColor, to convert back the image and show it using the show function. So in my case, because I'm using an external webcam, I will need to change the value of this to 1. And since I'm using an, using an external webcam, I don't need to use the flip function because it's not front facing. And when I run this, whoops, can see it all. Okay, great. So over here, as you can see, we've created three windows. Because remember, we created window called track bar, um, rail, and mask. So we have track bar, sorry, we have rail, mask, and track bar, which is, is a separate window. And as you can see over here, I've arguably what's called, or, or what is arguably the best object for color detection, because you want an object with bright colors when you do color masking. 
And let's say I want to only show the color green, right? I can manually adjust these bounds such that as you can see over here on the left window or the left image or the left video I'm talking about. Yeah, the image is becoming pixelated and blurry, except for the parts that are green. And when I change the upper bound, uh, the upper bound of hue, more and more of the image gets blurry until... So we can see that the value of green is between 64 and 91. And it looks pretty, not bad really, right? So everything you see here is actually green. There's no red or blue if you are to talking about the image, which is called mask. But there's still a lot of noise from the black and white parts. So what can you do about that? We can actually change the value of saturation and value such that it blocks out all other images. It blocks out all other colors in, within this image. So if I increase the value of saturation all the way until about 195, and I increase the value of V to about 120, you can see that this is almost a perfect masking of this is an almost almost perfect mask of the cube, and, you, and the other colors are all cannot be shown now. Yeah, and it's actually quite cool. You can see what color, what objects, or what colors. Oh yes, what colors the objects are in your room, and see how you can like hide them using this camera filter. In fact, this is actually how green screens work because when you have a green screen behind you, the camera uses this kind of image filter to detect which parts of the screen are green and blocks them out 